Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure Infrastructure Update. We're at the 13th of December, and I guess now we're kind of 12 days from Christmas. I would sing, but I could only get as far as Azure gave to me an instance of Azure AD, and then I kind of ran out of ideas. Um, as always, if this is useful, please go ahead and give this kind of a, a like, comment, subscribe, and share. Um, new videos this week, really. Uh, I finished all my work creating a new set of Pluralsight courses around the Azure Architect and the DevOps Expert. So I was having a bit of fun. So I created a video all about um, what is the actual link between an Active Directory user account and an Azure AD user account, kind of went in some detail, digging around the different sort of anchors and the immutable objects. And then how can we actually authenticate to Azure AD with Kerberos? Something I say you can't do, but you kind of can. So I, I kind of had a bit of fun. We dug into that. There's a lot of new features this week. Uh, obviously, it was very quiet the previous week because of Thanksgiving. I think they've kind of made up for it this week. Then I think it's going to quiet down as we go into Christmas. So on the compute side, so the Logic Apps runtime has a number of platform updates. These are all in preview. But there was already kind of a, a preview before, but they've done a lot of updates around now, direct support for integration accounts. This helps me kind of save some money and reduce overhead. There are now uh, custom connector extensions, so I can create my own um, extensions and connectors actually for Logic Apps in addition to the 400 that are just in box. There's now an easier integration with App Insights that remember gives me kind of that great ability to see, well, how is my app being used? Uh, machine learning based performance and failure based analysis, really just complete insight into what my app is doing. There's a new layout engine supporting more complicated flows, logic apps being used more, and the use cases are getting more complex. So now they're kind of changing the interface to do that. Uh, and just some additional improvements. Azure Functions, now the Java 8 and 11 um, on Linux is now generally available. So now when I create a function, I can always pick kind of what is that runtime I want to use. You'll now see both Java 8 and 11 available as an option. Azure Functions, now I can actually have custom handlers. So if I think about functions, there are a number of kind of um, hero languages that they focus on things around kind of C-sharp and, and PowerShell and Python. Well, now there's actually the ability for other languages, you can actually write your own handlers. So I'd write my own handler in the language I like, that I use, it could be PHP, could be Go. So I write this HTTP handler, and then what happens is when my function instance actually gets called, whatever that event that got triggered will actually get passed to that handler that I have written which I can then go and process in any way I want. So I now can have control of that. Uh, Azure Stack Edge now has VM support in preview. So remember, Azure Stack, there's a number of different kind of um, solutions that make up. Hub is kind of the big turnkey appliance we're used to. HCI, which actually just went GA, the new version, is where I kind of install it myself on my hardware. And then there's Edge, the kind of one U Edge appliances that can either have kind of NVIDIA GPUs or Intel FPGA, so I can have local kind of machine learning type scenarios. Well, now they can actually support virtual machines. So with Azure Stack Edge, it's actually managed by the Azure portal. So now from the Azure portal, I can click and actually create virtual machines on that Azure Stack Edge that sits in my data center. The goal is I can do kind of edge side compute, maybe minimize as much data as I have to send to the cloud to be processed, et cetera. Um, also on Azure Stack Edge is now Kubernetes is GA. So once again, from the Azure portal, I can actually now go and create AKS clusters directly on my AKS instances, sorry, on my Azure Stack Edge instances I have on-prem. More compute. So the AKS resource view has now gone generally available. And I'll actually show this quick. So if we jump over, oh, didn't mean to do that. Let's see if I can get my board back for a second. It's misbehaving as usual. So we'll just jump over this way. So here, if we actually go and look, if I pick kind of my Kubernetes service, 
and I look, for example, at my one that's running, we have all of these kind of resource views available to me. So it used to say preview in front of them, but they're now GA. So here I can dig in, I can see details about the various namespaces, um, workloads, services, the storage, the configuration. Um, these are all now just generally available. And this really now completely deprecates the Kubernetes native portal that you used to be able to get to. I think it's from clusters 1.18 and above, it won't even be there if you create a new cluster. So now we have this resource view that lets me actually go and dig in and see exactly what's happening. Um, it's now generally available, so don't worry about that native kind of Kubernetes view anymore. So let's see if I can get back to my slide from here. It's doing something very strange today. I'm not sure what is going on. Okay, we use the keyboard. No clue what's going on there today. Um, AKS pod identity is now in preview. So we're used to the idea of managed identities. So managed identity, a resource in Azure can actually get an automatically managed identity from Azure AD. And then a process inside that resource can consume that identity and connect to other resources as that identity, whatever permissions have been given. So now pods can actually use a managed identity as well. So the way this will actually work is I can have up to 50 pod identities per cluster. And then as part of my declarative configuration of my deployment YAML file, I can say, hey, this deployment, you're gonna use this identity. So I create a regular managed identity first, and then I associate that to a pod identity in my Kubernetes cluster, then I can have deployments will consume that identity and then use it. So it, it makes it a lot simpler to actually leverage. Um, Azure Monitor for Containers now has kind of a new reporting um, option available and the ability to see live logs. So again, if we kind of jump into this for a second, let's go and have a look. So firstly, if I actually from within here itself, I can think about what well, if I actually scroll down, we have kind of the monitoring insights. So if I look at my monitoring insights, we now have this reports, shows it's in preview. And I can now go into this reports and really trigger various workbooks around these different aspects of my environment. So as I go and look at disk capacity, for example, it opens a workbook information all around this. I could edit it because it's a workbook, I can customize it. I can even go and see, well, what's the log query that actually powers this behind the scenes. And then additionally, we have that idea of the live logs. So this time we'll actually go back into that workloads view that's now just gone GA. And if I actually look within here at my various, I've got my workloads and I'm looking at my deployments. If I just pick one of my deployments, so I'll pick my own custom one. You'll see on the left hand side here, we have this live logs. So if I select live logs, I'd then be able to select a certain instance, so I'll pick a certain pod. And at this point, I'd be able to capture any sort of live logs that are actually coming from there. So it helps me get kind of that better insight into exactly what's happening uh, in that environment. So we'll go back again. Really don't know what is going on today. Okay. App Service Environment v3 is now in preview. So obviously this is kind of the dedicated option where there's nothing shared. It deploys into, well, I said it deploys into your network. There's actually kind of a managed network as well now where it runs a lot of its components, but it's dedicated to you and it actually simplifies a whole bunch of the networking. So there's a new isolated v2 plan that uses by this ACE v3 so it's a simpler deployment experience. And I now don't have to pay any kind of stamp fee. All I pay for are the actual V2 SKUs that are actually gonna run the various workloads. So it's still a single tenant. There's no public internet endpoints required. I just deploy it into kind of my environment and there's a, an ACE managed VNet as well where it runs portions of its uh, workloads. And then of course, all of the application traffic runs in your virtual network. And then app service antivirus logs. So there's all these kind of anti-malware capabilities 
well now the antivirus logs are available for you to export if you actually want to go and see these. So if we actually jump over for a second, super quick, if we just quickly look at an app service, it just exposes itself through the regular diagnostic settings. So if I go and look at an app, and I go and look at my diagnostic settings, what you'll actually see is a new log available. And here we can see it. It's simply this app service antivirus scan audit logs. So I can now actually hook in and I can grab those logs if I want to actually be able to go and see those. So that's available to me as well. I'm just going to do that. On the networking side, really just one thing. So SQL Data Sync, this lets me do the bi-directional replication between databases, uh, both on-premises and in the cloud. And that now supports a private link endpoint to actually enable that connectivity. On storage, so we now have the ability to recover an account. So if I delete a storage account, as long as I don't create a new storage account with the same name and I'm within 14 days, I can actually restore a deleted account. So if I jump over super quick, so I, I just deleted one before we started this. So if I, the way you have to access this is I have to go to a storage account that hasn't been deleted. But then if you scroll down to the bottom, you kind of have this option to recover deleted account. If I select that, it will then go and find all of the accounts that have been deleted. Then there's this one Savile, please don't delete me. So I could select that and actually recover it. So it's actually failed, so that's a great demo. But the idea is that wouldn't fail and that would actually work. So fantastic demo there. But that's the idea behind it. You should be able to recover it. I'll have to go and look into that later why that one failed. But providing you're within 14 days and you haven't created another one, you should normally actually be able to go and recover it. Resource logs are now in preview. So like all Azure resources, we have that diagnostic settings and I can send it to log analytics or a storage account or an event hub. Well now in preview, we have this for Azure storage as well. So if I go in there, I'll see each of my different services like blobs and files, etc. I can specify the diagnostic settings for each of those to go to those possible targets. So it's really falling in line with the rest of the Azure resources. Azure Blob. So the NFS v3 capability, before it was only kind of the premium block blob, well now it's available in the general purpose v2 as well. That's in preview. It's only in certain regions. But obviously they're getting ready to make that kind of a bigger, more available service. And Azure Database for MariaDB, I now can stop start. That's in preview. Remember the Azure Managed Databases, things like MariaDB, the MySQL, the Postgres, the regular offering separates the compute and the storage. So what they're saying is now for MariaDB, I can stop the compute part. I'll still pay for the storage, that's still there, but I stop paying for the compute part of that service to save me money. So if it's maybe a test dev, I can now, hey, save some money by stopping the compute when I'm not using it. I'll still pay a little bit for the storage because I need to keep that so I don't lose my data. And then when I'm ready to use it again, well, I can just restart it. Miscellaneous. So the Azure AD Connect V2 endpoint is now available. There's really just two commands I have to run to switch this over. It's in the documentation. And what it's going to expose to me is a higher performance set of replication. And now I can replicate groups of up to 250,000 members up from the 50,000 that's the V1 endpoint. I need a, a recent version of Azure AD Connect. And then literally I just go and run these couple of PowerShell commands and it will flip over to use the V2 endpoint. And I get this um, improved performance and a greater number of members of groups. There's an updated set of uh, Azure architecture icons. These are free. You can just kind of go to the site. And what it lets me do is, I don't know what it's doing today, um, it's just a bunch of icons that I can leverage. Uh, Azure Monitor dedicated clusters now has double encryption support. So I can actually create dedicated instances of Azure Monitor clusters. If, I, if I'm kind of that big, I can work with Azure and actually get my own dedicated cluster for kind of the log analytics workspaces. It gives me benefits of kind of um, more consistent performance, I can get a higher throughput actually of logging. 
And then if I have multiple workspaces on the same dedicated cluster, I get better cross workspace kind of interaction. Well, if I'm using that dedicated cluster, I can now use the underlying storage ability to have two layers of encryption. There's the encryption at kind of the infrastructure and the encryption at the service itself. So I can now turn that on if I'm using the dedicated set of clusters for Azure Monitor, which not many people will be, um, but certainly it is uh, available to you. You can see this for regular storage accounts. If you're signed up, you can actually go and create a storage account and it has an option to actually to dedicated um, double levels of encryption. There's a new Azure Monitor agent. So this is in preview. This is replacing a whole bunch of different agents. So currently we have kind of the log analytics agent. Uh, currently we have diagnostics extensions. Currently we have, uh, what is it? The Linux, the telegraph agent. So this is gonna really replace all of those. It uses the new data collection rules available in Azure Monitor. And this is now available in preview. It supports better kind of filtering using XPath queries. It supports multi-homing for Linux. I can actually have um, sending data to both Log Analytics and Azure Monitor Metrics Time Series database. There's a whole bunch of improvements within there. Um, you may be using it already. So if I actually jump over for a second. So if you signed up for some of the previews, you may have noticed before, if I go and look at my virtual machines, for example, if I just go and look at this virtual machine, this is signed up for it. If we look at kind of insights, I got this nice kind of health preview. This is actually powered by that Azure Monitor agent. If I was to look at the extensions on this virtual machine, we can actually see this Azure Monitor Windows agent. It's available right here. And what this is actually fed by is if I go to Azure Monitor, we can see these data collection rules down here under settings. And this is what will actually drive the various collections. So here I can see kind of the resources I can see, hey, I've got that virtual machine is signed up for that. And then you'd be able to go through and do all the various configurations um, that you want, what it's going to capture. So that is now in kind of this, this preview state. And some of the other benefits we actually get through that is it supports things like Azure Arc, both Windows and Linux. It supports virtual machine scale sets. I can install it via ARM templates. Um, so that new agent is available and out there. SQL Hyperscale um, now supports a bring your own key, a customer managed key for its transparent data encryption. That's in preview. So the way we actually work is we have a database encryption key, the DEC, and then this is the TDE protector. So now I can use my own key, I can bring my own key, my own Azure Key Vault to actually protect that database encryption key. And the Azure portal have announced they're gonna end support for Internet Explorer 11 on basically the end of March, 2021. I don't know if anyone's using Internet Explorer 11 anymore, but obviously the recommendation is go and use Edge, or I do New Edge Chromium, and that's obviously the, the premium platform. So that was it, a lot of updates. Um, I hope that was useful. I hope everyone's getting ready for the holidays and is hopefully relaxing a little bit. But uh, any questions, please comment below. And until next time, stay safe. Take care.